What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Torrance and in today's video I decided I wanted to go hang out with a few friends and I hadn't tried out my new Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm creams and once they told me they were going to be wearing theirs I had to go ahead and do me a makeup tutorial and make sure I tried them out for the first time. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you swatches of all five colors that they released and I'm currently wearing one on the lips right now. And because I didn't want to just go ahead, throw some gloss on and call that a video, I decided we're going to sprinkle in an eyeshadow tutorial because every time my friends and I get together, we love wearing our Fenty Beauty eyeshadows. Normally, I would go in with my Moroccan Spice simply because it's neutral and I could be laid back, do my eye look and be out the door. But today, I was feeling myself and I wanted to just go in and feel as pretty and pink as possible. So I decided to add in my Fenty Beauty Snap Shadow and the palette number four. This is their Rose palette and it is absolutely beautiful. This palette contains six shades, three mattes and three metallics. And I'm wearing all six shades on the eye right now. So if you would like to know exactly which color I'm wearing on the lips, as well as how I achieve this eye look, just go ahead and continue to watch. But before we get started, I would love if you hit that subscribe button. If you already have, I would like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this tutorial. I know in the title it says we were talking about these today, the five new gloss bombs from Fenty Beauty. I'm not sure about you, but I absolutely love the Fenty Beauty gloss bomb formula. I have all 20 shades that they've come out with. So far, 15 were in the original formula that has sparkles in it. They've now come out with five that are completely high shine but are free of sparkles. And I'm not gonna lie to you. Just going in, I'm already looking at them like, y'all gonna be cute, but y'all not gonna be messing with my originals. But we're gonna give them a try simply because Rihanna has come out with one in Fenty Glow, which you know is my favorite one of them all. But I didn't see a point of just coming on bare face and putting on gloss and then cutting the video off. I wanted to give you all a little bit more than that. So today I decided, you know what, we're going to go ahead and throw in an eyeshadow tutorial with this. And today I'm going to be using my Fenty Beauty Snap Shadows. I currently only have four of them because I am someone who really likes to collect the gloss bombs. I really like collecting the, um, the diamond bombs. I love those. And I also like collecting the... Body Lavas, those are amazing. But I have four of these snap shadows and the one I use most often is number four. I got this simply because it has some nice pink shades and I figured this is the softest and most romantic of them all without going straight neutral. I figured I have enough neutral shades and I already love the Moroccan Spice palette. If you would like to see my tutorial on that, you can check that out right here. I'm telling you, I love that palette. But of all the snap shadows, this is the one I use the most. And I keep this one here, palette number four, next to this one here, Fenty. Of course, because we're doing it for Fenty. So I got these two together. And this Fenty palette here, I believe was from Holiday 2020. It came in a set. And it also, I believe, came with a lip gloss, I think. Either a lip gloss, a balm, or a highlighter. But I have not used all six shades from this. The one that I use the most out of this palette is this metallic purple here. It is very beautiful to me. I personally wish this palette would have had more of a shine to it, but it is what it is. But my favorite duo of them all is this one here. I picked up palette number seven simply because I was born on the 7th of September. And the fact that the world believes number seven is a lucky number just made it that much more special to me. But what really got me was the fact that this one had the only matte green shade of them all. And I'm not gonna lie to you, when I first got it, I barely used it because I was just so hurt that she did not give me a really green palette. All I saw was this one deep matte green. This one here leans a little green, but not quite as much as I wanted. And so every time I went in for it, it was just like, okay, it's all right, but it's not giving me the life I want. But then she came through and gave us a perfect number 10 palette, honey. So not only do I have my lucky number seven, I have a perfect 10 to go with it. And this one here is when she really brought the green colors for me and made it a complete palette for me. So now whether I want to go neutral or go green, I can go for this one here. And the fact that Rihanna has green eyes, this is exactly why this one is my favorite. But today we're gonna go soft and subtle because I want my lips to be the main focus of this look. But before we get started, I wanna give you a close up view of this palette as well as swatches. This palette contains six different shades, three mattes, and three metallics. And here is a close-up of the swatches of this shadow here. This is Snap Shadow Palette number four in the shade Rose. 
Left to right, our swatches start on the top row, and that first shade is the matte shade called Sleepover. The second shade is also a matte shade, and I found it pretty weird that this palette has hit hard pan on this particular shade. All of the other five shadows have only been swatched once, where I did have to go in and do that one twice, simply because it appears this particular shadow has hit hard pan. I've had this palette since it launched, and it's never done that before, but I recently did disinfect this palette again over the weekend because I used it last week, and I'm not sure if it's just because the palette has gone bad or because I used a different brand of alcohol, but I'm hoping the performance has not changed. The third shade is a metallic shade called Stunt Queen. It's the darkest metallic in the palette. The fourth shade is also a metallic called Sugar Shock. The fifth shade is our last and third matte. It is called Spice Trip. And shade number six is the last one in the palette. It is also a metallic. It is called Diva Fever, and it has the most sparkles to it. And as with all tutorials, I'll leave all tools and products in the description bar below. But we're going to start off with the lightest matte shade in this palette. This shade is called Sleepover, and we're going to use this as a transition shade. And I'm telling you, honey, anytime I am wearing Fenty Beauty eyeshadows, I am truly in love because I know I am going to go out with my friends. I don't know how, when, or where that all started, but somehow, some way, every time I link up with my best friend, I'm wearing a Fenty Beauty eyeshadow. Tell you, I think the reason being is because out of all of the shadows that she loved, whenever we would go out and I would recommend a palette, many times she found a lot of those palettes to be way too pigmented and much too difficult for her to blend out. But once I showed her that there are brands out here that do make buildable shadows that don't come off with full pigments, they come off with things that are nice and soft and you can work your way up. She truly fell in love with the Fenty Beauty palettes. The number one I wear whenever we are around each other is that Moroccan Spice palette. Especially like if we're going out to a comedy club, those was the good days. But I'm going in with the second layer simply because I like things a little more dramatic. If we were only going in with one layer for a day to day look, I would be good. But I really like this color. And as you can see, although she looks very light in the pan and she is very powdery she's very buildable very blendable and you can see that from over here that that has a nice pink hue to her just want to make sure i don't have any rough edges right here in that little outer corner but i'll be right back we're going to jump ahead and do this on the other eye and honey the blend on that is beautiful but because I have hooded eyes, we definitely got to go in and deepen up that crease. And to do so, we're going to go into this shade here, Little Mist, to deepen up our crease with a smaller blending brush. And we're going to take this and we're going to use this to deepen up our entire crease. And just start right here in the lower end. And although I can't admit it was a little more difficult to pick up product today, it is still building and blending out very beautifully, so I'm glad about that. I am still a little hurt that my palette has hit hard pan, but as long as it keeps performing, we ain't going to be mad. And we're going to start this color out low in the crease. We want to build it up there. And once you feel as if most of your color has diffused off, then you can start lifting your brush up higher into the crease to diffuse those edges. Baby, look at how vivid that color is. Yes, ma'am. I'm someone who doesn't rock pinks too often, but when I do, I am loving them. Now we're going to jump ahead and I'm going to do the same on the other side. Baby, and look at how vivid that is. I am telling you, I was going to be so hurt if my palette was no longer performing. Like I said, I can be honest with y'all and let y'all know, it has hit hard pan, but it still builds and blends like a dream. So we're not gonna be mad at it. Now I'm just gonna take a glitter primer and cut my crease. And I'm taking this at first, I was going to cut in front of the crease, but I changed my mind. We're just going to leave this regular. Again, we're hanging out with friends today, so we don't want to do too much. 
but I do want to cut my crease high. Bring it from front to back and bring it all the way down. I might have put a little too much primer down, but oh well. Be right back after I do this side. And before we go in with our shimmer shades, I want to put a light layer of our crease shade on our outer V. So we're going to go in with that same brush and we want to go in with just the lightest amount of color. I honestly want to put a deeper color in there later, but I don't want it to go in rather patchy or anything. I want to make sure I have a nice, beautiful blend. So we're going to go in and I'm just trying to get the lightest amount of color down. I just don't want a tacky base, so when I go in with that darker color, it'll blend a little easier. Switched up my plans. Before I deepen up my outer V, I want to first go in with my lid shades. And for the inner half of my lids, I want to go in with this shade here, Diva Fiva. And I have to take and put this shade on the inner half here, simply because this shade had the most sparkles, so I can tell it is going to be the brightest and most blingiest of them all. And the thing is, even though this does have the most sparkles to it, I am telling you, it doesn't come off to me as like a high shine metallic shade. It more just comes off like, sort of like a sequin shade where you can clearly look at that and tell that it's very shiny. But to me, the closer you get, the more visible those sparkles are. And they're not chunky, they're really smooth, they're really small. But I think the color you get from a distance and the color you get up close looks like two different things. And that's exactly why I like this particular shade. I promise you, this is probably going to be the first shade that I hit pan on in this palette. And we go in here with just a little bit more because it's buildable. And it's going to give us a little more fullness. I got to remember not to take over the whole lid space with this one color. So we're going to cut it off there and I'll be back after I do this on the other side. Look at that, baby. The color and the beam on that, I'm telling you, the camera is not giving it justice. But we're not through yet. We still got to fill up our outer lid. And for the outer half of our lid, we're going to go into this shade here, Stunt Queen. And we're going to use this in between those two to bring everything together. This shade is going to help transition that inner corner into the outer V. And I don't want a harsh line, so we're going to just take and sweep our brush back and forth a little bit to diffuse that edge. And we're going to do that with the first layer. That way, when we come in with our second layer, we can just build up the shine and the color here. And because this color doesn't have sparkles like that first one, it won't come off as quite as strong and help transition over into our outer V rather easily. Got to be back after I do this on the other side. Look at her, look at her. Sis, but we not done yet. We want to go in a little bit more and make things a little darker. And now for the last step, we want to go into this shade here, Spice Trip. We're going to take that on our smallest blending brush and use that to deepen up our outer V and our lower crease. So what I want to do is come here to my outer V and I want to first just press this on the outer half that's closest to the edge just to build up that color, just to make sure the deepest part of our outer V is the darkest. And once we have that laid there, we're going to take this and diffuse it into the highest point and bring that all the way up to our outer lid shade. We don't want to completely diffuse that. And if you must, you can take it all the way up to the center. But I want to try to keep this here on the outer end just to help bring the eye up and out. I don't want to bring this above that inner lid shade, which is the brightest. Gonna bring it down, pick it back up into the crease, and we just want to make sure we don't have any harsh lines. And once we're through blending, we can go back in, tap off our brush, and just press one more time right there on the outer V to make sure that is the deepest, darkest point of the eye. 
And now that I'm satisfied with what we have on this side, I'll be right back after I finish this one. This here is a beautiful look and I know I tried to go soft as I normally would, but because I'm on camera, I'm trying to use all six colors at once. So I'll be right back after I finish the face and I'll be back to show you how we'll finish off the eyes and the lips. Who girl, I done went in and did a little extra today. I know things were supposed to be soft and subtle, but it got the best of me. I went in first, did a wing liner. I went in with my Fenty Beauty Fly Liner in the shade Cause I'm Black. And on one side, it was going good and small. Went to the other side and accidentally took it out a little further and put a little curve on it. I'm like, ooh, now we got to do that on both sides. And because I had liner on, I'm like, okay, Torrance, if you got black liner and a point of going in with a brown eyeliner. So I went in with my fave, the Perversion 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil by Urban Decay. So I have this on the lower lash line. And I'm like, okay, Torrance, since you got liner, you're going to need you a mascara. And for that, I went in with my Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara by Fenty Beauty. This is also in the shade because I'm black. Put that on top and bottom lashes. But then I felt as if, even with all of that going on, I needed a pair of lashes to help bring things together. Simply because that wing liner, and in my opinion, most wing liners seem to just take over the look and I wasn't having it. So I'm like, okay, Torrance, you need you a big pair of lashes, something that's bigger than the wing so that they see those, but not so big that they take over the look. So today I'm wearing my Ivor lashes. These are in the style LA Baby. This was a collab with Jordan Woods. I believe they did three different styles, but this is my favorite pair because they're rather thin near the front and it has a really strong flare on the end where it's much thicker. And to me, it matches the wing because the wing is barely noticeable here in the front but has a nice curve on the outside. So if I have my eyes closed, you can tell there are lashes there, but if I open them nice and wide, you can see how big they come, and there's still more drama on the ends where I want it. For blush, simply because this color is way too dark for me, but I am someone who just, you know, does not listen. I just figure out if I bought it and I like it, I'm gonna use it. And although this color makes a beautiful eyeshadow, I just keep going ahead and using it as a blush. And this is my Kilowatt Full Freestyle Highlighter in the shade Penny For You Thoughts. I really, really, really like this color as an eyeshadow, but I've never tried it as a blush. And although I was able to get it on, I had to go in very lightly and blend that out very strongly. Otherwise, I'd have had a really dark streak here on my cheek. Of course, this is much darker than my skin tone, so I can't use it as a highlighter. But once again, as an eyeshadow, I absolutely love this color. And although everybody talks about the highlighter Trophy Wife, for my skin complexion, it's just a little too yellow for me. But my favorite one, the one I think everybody is sleeping on, is the Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter Duo in the shade Hustler Baby. She's been my favorite since the day they launched. It's this shade right here on this side. And you can see right there on the nose, she's nice and beaming. Right there on the cheek, we have a nice glow going on. And I just find this to be much more subtle and much more natural than Trophy Wife. So anytime I'm going for a Fenty highlighter, more than likely this is going to be it. And today I already went in and set my brows. I did not forget it this time. Lately I have been forgetting to do it. But instead of my normal brow pencil, I did switch things back over to my Fenty Beauty Brow MVP in the shade Dark Brown. I remember when I first got this for my birthday, I could not put it down. But then I realized I was going to run out of this one and didn't have a backup. And because I have a backup of my ABH, I've been trying to run out of that one and use this one for special occasions. And because we're wearing so much Fenty Beauty, today is one of those days. But we are not complete with the face. We still want to go in and finish off our lower lash line and also the lips. And because I have black eyeliner on, I want to go in with some darker colors. So I'm going to take this shade here, Spice Trip, with a push liner brush and apply that to my lower lash line. And I'm going to just start this on the outer half. We're going to push that all the way up. And truth be told, just looking at this color, I may be able to go straight in with a pencil brush for this look. But because the top has so much pink in it, I think we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and use a pencil brush to blend this out. But I want that depth and that dimension closer to the lower lash line, where I hope that black look like it's truly fading out. You see, we got a little more dimension going on. Be right back after I do this on the other side. 
And now to diffuse the lower lash line, we're going to go back into this shade, Low Mist, with the pencil brush. And just like with the other color, we're going to start on the outer half here. Alright, we're going to continue to buff that out. Sorry for the jump cut during this one. I just received a call and I had to hurry up and go mute the phone before you could hear everything. We want to connect this to that outer area there. And we just want to diffuse that dark brown. Have a nice gradient effect going on. And now we're going to do the same on the other eye and I'll be right back when we finish. Now for the last step for the eyes, we want to go in with the only shade we haven't used yet. This is the shade Sugar Shock. We're going to use that to highlight our inner corner and our brow bone. And we're going to take this and we want to put that right near the very center of the eye. To me, this shade is darker than the previous shade we put on the inner corner. I mean, on the inner half of the lid. But for me personally, it's going to help give our inner corner a nice pink hue when we go back over it with our main face highlighter. Because that one is so gold. I didn't want to go in with it just straight because it would take away from this look. And I know I want a nice more subtle look right here underneath the brows where we have less product. But for the inner corner, I really wanted that pink to stick out. As you can see right there, you can tell there is a pink highlighter there, but she's not quite beaming the way I want her to. And so to turn up the brightness on our inner corner, we're going to use the same highlighter we used on the face, this shade Hustler Baby, and we're going to apply that right on top of it, but just enough to brighten it, not enough to take away that pink hue. And I picked up very little product here because as I stated, we don't want this to stop being pink. I want it to go in with just enough, as you can see, to turn up the brightness. You can still see it has a slight pink hue to it, but it's much stronger than this side. So now we're going to go in and just add a little bit here. And we'll call that that. We're almost through with the face. The only thing we have to do is apply our gloss. This is a brand new formula from the brand. And because I have the first 15 that they came with the sparkle formula, I had to go ahead and get all five in the cream formula, but I've never tried them before and I wanted to do that for the first time on camera with you all. But before we do, I wanted to show you all exactly what the box looks like as well as swatches of each color. This here is what the box looks like. It just says Fenty Beauty Cream on there. It also lets you know that you received nine milliliters of product here and these retail for 19 US dollars just like their normal formula. On the top of the box, you also see a swatch of the color as well as the name and the number. First up is the shade Mauve Wives. This is shade 01 and it is described as a rosy mauve. Next up is Fenty Glow. This is shade 02 and it is described as a universal rose nude. This shade here is 03 Honey Waffles and it is described as a honey butter brown. For shade 04, we have the color Cookie Jar and this is described as a chocolate caramel. And for 05, we have the shade Fruit Snacks which is described as a berry red. And this here is a close up of the swatches. I've double dipped all five shades just to make sure you can see exactly what they look like at full opacity. Left to right, our shades are 01, Mauve Wives, 02, Fenty Glow, 03, Honey Waffles, which in my opinion seems to be the most desired shade based upon online comments. Next, we have shade 04, Cookie Jar, and last but not least, 05 Honey Snacks. And although all five shades are truly beautiful, there is no point of me lying. Soon as I saw the promo pictures for these, the first thing I told myself is, they better do a shade for Fenty Glow. I know I talk about it, I know I complain, we tired of seeing it and everything, but it is truly my favorite rose nude color by Fenty Beauty. Probably one of my all time favorite lip glosses the only one that could even possibly, even possibly compare is Bronze Temptation by Pat McGrath. But considering the fact I like every shade of the gloss bomb I've ever had, but I'm really truly only in love with about two or three of the Pat McGrath colors. We're going to go ahead and say Fenty got it. But this one here and Fenty Glow for this cream, 
we got to go ahead and try this. Truly because one, I believe this color would be the most flattering with this look. I think the only one that probably would go a little bit better maybe be that Mauve Wives, but I'm gonna save that for another look. Stay out on the look for that one because I know y'all been asking me for my Mauve looks and trust me, I got one coming for y'all. But today, we're gonna put the regular Fenty Glow to the side and go on with this cream. And you already know, honey, I got huge, big old fat old lips. They're my favorite part of the body. And although Fenty Beauty has a wand that is big enough to cover both lips with one dip, I ain't never satisfied with that. Mm-hmm. And you can see just that one dip get us nice, get us glossy, get us feeling cute. But nope. I got to go in again. I just got to, honey. My DSLs won't have it no other way. And I'm loving how creamy this formula is. Mm-hmm. I don't tell you, I just love a wet, slippery looking lip. And the fact that she covers with no lip liner, like, oh, look at that. Oh, honey, yes. Mm -hmm. Let me hurry up and finish this face off, because, honey, I can't wait to take pictures with this one. And you all know how we finish things. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter, so things last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, and good times. Gonna give this a few more seconds to dry and I'll be back to show you all the final look. And this is the final look. Wanna go ahead and give you all the full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you, honey, this Fenty Glow has got me glowing. Honey, look at how juicy and how glossy these lips are. You would think I done went and got lip fillers like, and the fact we don't have no liner on, you all know I absolutely love a lip liner gloss combo, but anytime I can go in with a straight gloss, nothing else needed, it's even better. And for me, the Fenty Glow color is just a universal shade. I personally have found, regardless what your skin tone is, you can make this work with or without a liner. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's not 100% my fave like the original Fenty Glow. But this one here, I think I'm going to be able to enjoy on more days, especially days that I go to work. Because I am someone who's always wearing a face mask. And at the end of the day, I can see those tiny reflective particles from the original gloss bomb on my face. So I'm starting to believe that this one here will be more for day to day. And anytime I'm just sitting in the house taking pictures or doing a tutorial, I can go in with the original formula. Because as I stated, this one does have reflective particles. So it will leave those anytime, let's say you're eating. If you kiss someone, they're going to get that on them. And this cream formula just seems like it'll play with other items better and it won't leave such a large mess behind anytime you wear your face mask. So I really do believe this formula is going to be a huge hit from the line. I personally can't wait for them to extend it because I would really, really, really like to see what a true red cream lip gloss will look like from them. I know they have the fruit snacks, which is a berry red. But to me, I want to see just like an uncensored in this formula. Just a bold red cream lip gloss. And I'm telling you, this one here, she got me feeling myself because I'm about to be sitting here for about a good 15, 20 minutes just going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we can't forget about our snap shadows here. I'm telling you. Although this middle shade here has hit pan, I'm somebody who wants to keep it honest with you all, it does still build and blend like a dream. I personally think that before I do finish this shadow palette, that one probably will go bad and probably hit hard pan to the point I won't be able to use it again. But more than likely, before that can ever occur, 
I'm gonna hit pan on this shade because I'm telling you, it's already a huge dip in it and I absolutely love this shade. And every single time I've ever used this palette, I've gone in with this shade. Even if I'm just going in for a quick look where I just use one shade as a transition and a pre-shade, one shade on the lid and out the door, it's always this one particular shade. I've used this in the crease, I've used this in the crease, doesn't matter, she's the one that's going on the lid. But I hope you all truly did enjoy today's tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you also leave me a comment down below if you've grabbed any of the Gloss Bomb formulas. I personally love both formulas, but for me, it's just, I guess because I've been wearing the original one since the day it launched, I got a little stronger emotional tie to it. But over the next week, I'm gonna try my very hardest to completely avoid that formula and just try this cream one just to see if it really does hold up just as well as the other one. And I'm not just putting my feelings all in that, but I'm telling you, it feels amazing and looks even better. And also make sure you're on the lookout for my Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation review. It finally came in and I have it here and we're gonna make sure I use that on camera so it will be a first impressions. It still has the embossing here to prove that I have not used it, but I can't wait to try it out on camera with you all. And because my friend has already called me twice during this tutorial, I need to hurry up and put this to an end. So with nothing else to say, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.